This is Newswatch, compiled from the wires of United Press International, the Associated Press, and military news sources. Environmental information from Danish Arctic contractors' weather operations, plus video reports from News Information Weekly Service and the Thule Action Cam. Now, Television 8 and 13 presents Newswatch. Good evening once again and welcome to News Watch. And we're going to change things just a bit tonight. We have some very special guests on base today and heading the group, Commander of the U.S. Air Force Space Command, General James V. Hardinger. Tonight we're going to bring you an interview that we recorded earlier today. General Hardinger is also the head of NORAD, both commands headquartered at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado. General Hardinger has been in the military since he was drafted into the infantry in 1943 and he's been a career-long fighter pilot since he graduated from pilot training in 1950. General Hardinger, the Space Command recently celebrated its first anniversary. How, do, uh, how does the command look to you now? I think it looks great. We, uh, a year ago when we activated the Space Command, we, we knew it was going to be a crucial milestone in the evolution of military space operations. And it wasn't, it wasn't to militarize space. Rather, it was to see that we can, uh, we will be prepared to defend our assets in space. It really is to deter space warfare. So, uh, and we knew that it that it uh, was uh, it, exactly in line with the president's policy that he stated at the shuttle landing last July, when he said we need a space program to strengthen national security. And in activating the space command, I think that was a propitious time. And after a year. Uh, so much more has happened than we even expected. So uh, I, I think we have a great future. We've had a busy year, I'll tell you that. Well, with that in mind, what challenges do we have ahead of us? Well, first I think I should tell you a couple of, uh, some of the things we've done so far. We activated the Space Command on 1 September last year. On 1 October, we activated the Space Technology Center at Albuquerque, mm -hmm. realizing the uniqueness of space systems and the close tie that's required between the technologist, the developer, and the operator. The, that, the commander that uh, Space Technology Center reports to the commander of the Space Division in Los Angeles, who's my vice commander uh, of the Space Command. So we have very close linkage between the research and development world and the, on the operational world. And I think this is, uh, that's the reason we activated an operational space command. There's never been an operational space commander before. Now they have one, and I'm going to be the spokesman, the honest broker for all the uh, the operational commanders to see that our requirements uh, are uh, show up in the research, development, and acquisition cycle. Now, one of our primary missions here at Thule is BMU's radar. We're having more and more satellites going into space, particularly with the shuttle program now in full swing. Um, do you see that uh, maybe our mission here might become obsolete? No, I think just the opposite. We're going to have space-based sensors and ground-based sensors. And then in NORAD's missile warning and, and attack assessment mission area, uh, on every space or missile launch in the world, I have to assess as to whether that's a threat to North America or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were 500 of those, of those launches last year. And on every one of those, the fate of the nation, the fate of the world is at stake. And so here, here Thule is one of the most important facilities we have so that we can, I can provide the National Command Authority with reliable, timely, unambiguous warning. That's part of the, the, the most important mission in, in our Department of Defense. And we have a proposed unified uh, space command. What will the Air Force's role in that be? Well, it's like other space, other unified commands, we'll have a service uh, component from the Air Force, it'll be our Air Force Space Command. We'll have a service component from the Navy. Uh, they're activating a space command on, a, a Navy Space Command on 1 October. That will be the Navy service component. The Army will have a component. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's the next real challenge for us. And th there are no service boundaries to space. You know, we, we all uh, benefit so much. In, in communications and navigation, intelligence and warning and weather forecasting, surveillance, all, all the services down to battalions and ships and squadrons all benefit. So it is going to be very advantageous to all the services, I think, uh, when we go to a unified space command. How will the other services interact with us within that unified space? Well, they will, 
all the operational elements, all the operational um, satellite systems and programs will be under the operational commander, just like uh, it is now. And uh, in the unified and specified operational command chain, the, the air forces are in that chain, the, the land forces are in that chain, and the naval forces are in that operational chain. The only forces not in are space forces. And it, so it's a very logical uh, move that we would go to a, a unified space command. It's just a matter of time. What can we expect out of a command like this? Well, I, I think you can expect to have uh, uh, to have better use of the, of the space programs, to see that uh, some of my responsibilities uh, are like survivability of all the space systems, to make sure that they're, they are there if we ever need them in time of conflict or crisis. We haven't had an operational commander before. Now we do. I'll be the spokesman to see that those uh, survivability features are in the are included in the, in the space programs and, and systems. The 12th Missile Warning Group was recently redesignated as the 10 12th Missile or Air Base Group, and the uh, 12th Missile Warning Squadron was established here as a tenant unit. Um, why were these changes made? Well, it was just to align them as, as we have the Space Command align. The commander of the Air Base Group is going to report to General Spraker, commander of the 1st Space Wing and the commander of the uh, Missile Warning Squadron will report to General Spraker's uh, deputy for operations. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, the way the, that's the way we set up the organization. So to bring BMUs and all the other systems, all the other sensor sites in line with that, we, we had to do just a little realigning, but it's mostly just a wiring diagram change. Thule, being a re the remote location that it is, um has some problems, one of which is MAC air travel between here and here in the United States. It's our only connection that we have. Do you see a possibility of us possibly getting commercial air, air service between here and the United States? Well, I don't know. We're going to, we're going, that's the reason I'm here, to look at those type problems and, uh, and uh, look at the, the base and, and the people, talk to the people here. And so uh, that's the reason that uh, General Vesey visited a few weeks ago. That's the reason I'm visiting, to see what's exactly what's happening at Thule, so we we are more sensitive and more aware of what's going on and see what is needed here and then try to help. Also, since we are a remote base and since we're so small, we have many one deep slots that we have scattered throughout the base. Cancellations of assignments, uh, delays in PCS arrivals often, often hampers some of our operations mm -hmm. here. Uh, is there any uh, anything going on to try and help us with that kind of well, one of the things we're doing is we're, we're building, constructing a test development and training center in Colorado Springs. And we're going to try to provide a lot of the training to the, to the people before they get to a, to a remote site. Mm -hmm. So that it won't, that on the job training won't eat into the 12 months that we, we hope to get uh, from their performance when they come to a place like this. So that's one of the things we're doing to try to uh, to try to lessen the training that's required once they get here by giving them, bringing them all through, or most of them through Colorado Springs and, and giving them all the training we can there. Mm -hmm. Are you working with AFMPC by chance? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, thank you, General Harding, for okay. coming by today. It's good to be here. Meantime, faces are our windows to the world, but how would we feel if they became badly disfigured? Well, for some of those with that problem, there's some help on the horizon, and we'll talk about it when News Watch continues.